Magnetic flux through a rectangular loop. A rectangular loop of width A and length B is located near a long wire carrying a current I. The distance between the wire and the closest side of the loop is C. The wire is parallel to the long side of the loop. Find the total magnetic flux through the loop due to the current in the wire. Now, the magnetic flux... Uh, basically, we have to know the magnetic field inside this region of the loop. And for that purpose, we can consider the magnetic field due to this current carrying wire. Now, if you look at this Amperian loop um, that is centered around the wire, we can see that the magnetic field lines will be circulating in the uh, in a direction given by the right hand rule the thumb points outside the magnetic field lines basically go into the page on this side and they come out of the page on this side so we can see that the for the amperian loop close path integral b dot ds is equal to mu zero times the current enclosed by this loop current through the loop is i uh, it is b times 2 pi r, because the magnetic field is a constant on this loop, uh, is equal to mu zero i. So once again, the magnetic field due to this wire is mu zero i divided by 2 pi r. Now, as for the magnetic flux, flux phi b, we have to integrate uh, the b dot da throughout this loop why because the magnetic field is changing as a function of r so we go to a distance r we consider a small region with uh, with dr and we can integrate over all such regions going from uh, r is equal to a to r is equal to a plus c b dot da that's basically equal to the integral from uh, r is equal to c to a plus c uh, integral from c to a plus c so basically i'm going from one side of the loop to the other side so this is r equals c this is r equals a plus c uh, the magnetic field is mu zero i over 2 pi r and the area vector is basically equal to and dA is equal to B times dR. So that's the area of this uh, region. Okay, uh, and the magnetic field and the area vector are basically parallel to each other. So uh, the area vector, uh, we can say, uh, points uh, into the page here. So um, just to uh, work out the flux. Okay, so the total magnetic flux phi b is then the result of this integral. Uh, the result of the integral will give us natural logarithm integral dr over r. So we have mu zero i b constants coming out divided by 2 pi natural logarithm of r which is natural logarithm of evaluated between a plus c and c natural logarithm of a plus c over c so that will be the magnetic flux okay and as c goes to infinity what happens to this magnetic flux in the limit c goes to infinity mu zero i b over two pi becomes natural logarithm of uh, 1 plus a over c well a over c will become 0 so natural logarithm of 1 is 0 so this becomes 0 so when we are infinitely far away because the magnetic field will decrease to 0 at that really far distance the flux will decrease to 0 on the other hand as c goes to 0 uh, you can see that as c goes to zero this will go to infinity and therefore the magnetic flux will uh, reach 
infinity. And because the magnetic field goes to infinity at r is equal to zero, this is true for an infinitesimally thin wire. Obviously, it doesn't go to infinity at the uh, surface of a finite wire. It, it becomes maximum. In reality, this is not the case. There is uh, always a finite thickness of this wire. Okay. So, uh, once again, going back to Gauss law here, for any closed surface, the number of lines entering is equal to the number of lines leaving. So, for example, if you consider this solenoid and take this uh, spherical closed surface here, the number of lines entering will be equal to the number of lines leaving. Uh, and we will have int closed surface integral b dot dA is equal to zero since there are no magnetic monopoles as opposed to closed surface integral e dot dA electric flux is q in over epsilon zero because the charges can be isolated. Okay, so we considered the magnetic flux through a rectangular uh, loop. Uh, first, we find the magnetic field due to this current carrying wire to be mu zero i over two pi r using this Amperian loop and writing Ampere's law, closed path integral b dot ds is mu zero times current through the loop, which is i. The flux is to be calculated by looking at b dot ds for all uh, ds basically at a dis radial distance r from this wire. Uh, and that distance varies between C and A plus C. So going from C to A plus C, magnetic field mu zero I over two pi R that points into the page. Area vector points into the page. Uh, we can define it that way. And the, the DA is basically B, the length multiplied by the width DR. And dr over r integral gives us natural logarithm of r evaluated between a plus c is natural logarithm a plus c over c. In the limit c goes to infinity, we have a over c plus 1 here. a over c goes to 0, natural logarithm of 1 takes us to 0. The magnetic field dies out as 1 over r and in the, in the infinite limit we will have no magnetic flux. As c goes to 0, we, this suggests that the magnetic flux will go to infinity, which would be true for an infinitesimally thin wire, but in reality we have a finite thickness of this wire. While the magnetic field is maximum at the uh, outside uh, surface of the wire, it's not going to be infinite due to a finite thickness. And um, for any closed surface, we have seen that the number of field lines entering is equal to the number of field lines leaving because there is no source of magnetic field inside the closed surface due to magnetic monopoles. That's Gauss law in magnetism. 